Well, the old saying is that it's better to give than receive, but you should still consider what you're going to be giving friends and family this holiday season. Some of this year's most popular gifts have hidden costs attached to them. So for more on that, we are joined by SmartMoney.com's Kelly Grant. Thanks for being here, Kelly. Good morning. You know, a lot of people have the tablets on that list. Is there something within that that we need to be aware of when it comes to giving those? Well, tablets specifically, you really do want to think about some of the costs, not just for the apps. We, we assume that the recipient's going to run up a bill for that, yeah. but for some of those three G services that are attached to that uh, for That's them to be true. able to use the data. Mm -hmm. uh, some tablets do require that you sign up for a two year plan, and someone who's purchasing that, you know, you, you, if you're sending that to a recipient, you want them to be aware of that. Right. Uh, um, but also, even for something like an iPad 2, there's no 3G connection required there. But when you're picking out one to give, you have to decide if you're going to get the Verizon version or the AT&T. Yeah, and who their carrier is and mm -hmm. all of that. So, should you just get a tablet that doesn't require something like that? Well, if you give a tablet? If you give a tablet, it, really the best thing to do is to talk to the recipient about then they what they what might want to use. Is. Well, they know, but that's better than saddling <laughs> them true. with a two-year data connection, and All that's right, like $1,000. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and you know, not everyone can do this, but we see this every now and then, people giving cars. I've never received one, but uh, it seems like a great gift. Yeah, on the front of it, it is, and uh, we, we hear that this is mostly among affluent people who are giving this, and usually <laughs> then they're, they're people, not as, they're not as worried. Yeah. The 1% the, the or they might be giving cars. Okay. If you're fortunate enough to receive one, though, you do have to realize that you're on the hook then for whatever the insurance is, the taxes, mm. the fuel, the maintenance, all of that can add up to easily $40,000 over the course of five years, especially if you're talking about a luxury vehicle. $40,000, really? And, yes, very, very expensive, and certainly that's a little more than most people think about when they're they're trying to factor in how much car can they afford. Yeah. So although it's very nice of someone to buy you a car, you do still want to be thinking about what you can really afford in the that I don't cost know, Kelly, if someone gave you a car, would you take it? Probably. Um, but, <laughs> yeah, you know. I think I would too. But we've got to take into fact these other factors. And I get it. All right. What about pets? I mean, they look so cuddly and cute, and you see, you know, the commercials opening up on, you know, Christmas Day, and the little cat or dog comes out. It just it seems so wonderful. But who doesn't want the puppy with the bow? I mean, right. I, I've actually got two cats. Both of them were gifts, um, and I can tell you, you know, when you're taking on a pet, you're talking about it with some of these larger animals, a 15, 20 year commitment is mm -hmm. how long they're going to live. Mm -hmm. And that can easily be a thousand dollars a year to have a cat or to have a dog, uh, 2000 almost if you've got a large dog, even something small like a guinea pig, $700 a year by the ASPCA's really? a guinea estimates. Pig? Mm -hmm. When you factor in food, the bedding, everything All else that. with that animal, um, you know, the cost can really add up. So again, you know, better to have that IOU than to get somebody a pet that they weren't expecting. And even if they have expressed that they're interested in an animal, mm -hmm. the shelters tell us a lot of animals do end up going back to the shelter just because that particular puppy might not be a good fit. Yeah, that is so true. And it's really sad too because you don't ever want that the animal to be going back to the shelter because then you worry about, well, did it ever find a good home? So. Exactly. All right, well, gift cards, they seem like a good idea. I love getting gift cards. I mean, what's the downside to a gift card? Well, studies have shown that uh, for the gift cards, it, that people tend to spend about 140% of the value of the gift card. And that's going to mean if you give somebody a $50 card, they're probably shelling out the 50 plus maybe 20 of their own cash. And that's really not on the gift giver so much, but you do want to think about the fees that could be attached. We've had some new gift card legislation that's made them a lot friendlier, mm -hmm. but there still can be fees that come into play. You might spend $10 to replace a stolen gift card, for example, or one that's lost. Uh, oh, you as much can as replace them. I just figured if you lost them, well, they were gone. Some of them, you just lose them and, yeah. and they are gone. But even uh, others will charge $5 a month in maintenance once you reach that you know, 12-month mark if they haven't been used right away. Wow. And that is someone who's giving a gift. You want to be thinking about making sure you're getting a card that will let the recipient use the full value. And so when you get that gift card, spin it right away is what you're exactly. saying. Exactly. <laughs> That's how to be a good recipient. <laughs> All right, Kelly Grant. Thanks so much. Really good information. We do Thank appreciate you. it as the holiday season is here.